We have seen how children enjoy storytelling in the classroom. And these are children who live in the multimedia world of screen. Internet, television, iPad, tablets, and of course the mobiles. And yet, these children thoroughly enjoyed listening to a story. That is the magic of storytelling. That is the magic of the oral tradition. And therein begins its significance in the language classroom. For after all, as educators, that is our agenda to get the child to learn the language, to get the child to become interested in the language, to get the child to explore the language, to get the child to try and discover ways and means of using the language himself or herself. Isn't that what we are all aiming for as language teachers and educators? What better way to do it than in a way where the child enjoys the transaction, the teacher enjoys the transaction and together they have a wonderful time and they learn as well. This is what is achieved through the oral tradition. This is what is achieved when the teacher uses storytelling in the language classroom. The benefits of storytelling are immense for all the people who are involved in using stories. Let us of course begin with the children themselves. As we have just seen, when the children listen to stories, so what really happens when children listen to stories? When children listen to stories, first and foremost, there is no competition. When they answer questions, they are guessing and having fun. There is no right, there is no wrong. Nobody is better, nobody is weaker. It is in a cooperative social environment that children are getting a beautiful wide exposure to language just like they would when they learnt their mother tongue. Think about it. When you learnt your mother tongue, did you learn grammar from your father? Did you learn vocabulary from your mother? Writing skills from your grandfather and reading skills from your grandmother? No. We learnt the whole of the language from everybody around us. And that is the opportunity that children get when they listen to stories. The children get to improve their listening skill, speaking skill, reading skill, writing skill, vocabulary and grammar. All of the six integral elements of language development. We will look further into how this happens. Not only do all these skills develop in the child, the child enjoys this learning, the child is motivated to learn more and something very interesting happens when children listen to stories over a period of time. Children remember stories. So what is really happening is we are building their memory skills. What is also happening for the child is even the shy child who usually does not speak in the class starts becoming more confident. So this is an opportunity for the child's confidence to also develop. These are just some of the few benefits of storytelling in the classroom for the child. Now let us also look at you the teacher or the educator who uses stories in the classroom. When you use stories in the classroom, children listen to you much more. Children enjoy listening to you. 
children begin to bond with you a lot better. And you will find that in the process of telling stories, your classroom performance improves. You engage with the language much more. You engage with the language much more easily. And these, for a teacher, are very important. The reason why children listen to you better when you tell stories is because storytelling is whole body communication. You use not just your voice, you use your face, your eyes, your fingers, the whole of your body to express and communicate with the child. And when you do that, there are two very important things. The child listens to you better and you become a much more powerful communicator. Isn't that a fantastic benefit for a teacher? More so over a language teacher? Well, and another very interesting side effect of telling stories is that you become very popular with the children. They begin to trust you more. They share a lot of things and their bonding with you improves very much. This has benefits for you even in classroom management. Think about it. Once the teacher enjoys using storytelling and is benefited from it, the child enjoys and the child is benefited from it, naturally the institution as a whole is highly benefited from this transaction. And it always happens that often parents come back extremely happy with what is happening in the classroom. Not only that, it has been found that a lot of behavioral issues with children can be traced back to language learning issues. If storytelling is used as a tool for effective and powerful language development, then consequently we are going to have less and less children with language issues which means possibility of lesser children having behavioral issues and all of these are very useful for the institution. Therefore, the benefits of storytelling are immense indeed. So it comes as no surprise to us that once when the mother of a maths genius went to the famous scientist Albert Einstein and said, Mr. Einstein, please tell me, how can I make my child a bigger genius than he already is? What can I do to promote this wonderful mind that he has? And Albert Einstein said, if you want your child to be smart, tell him stories. If you want him to be smarter, tell him more stories. And if you want him to be even more smart, tell him even more stories. Stories are the trigger for the child's creativity and the child's imagination. We live in a world where the screen gives us everything. Images from the television, images from the internet, images on the mobile phone. However, when the child listens to a story, the child is creating the image in the mind. It is almost like making a work of art. And that is why it is so much more joyful for the child. That's why I call storytelling as licensed and channelized daydreaming. It is just like daydreaming. The child can see pictures, feel what has happened, imagine everything and yet it is the teacher who is deciding what the child will see and it is the teacher who's allowing for all the daydreaming to happen in the classroom. Storytelling is indeed a wonderful tool to build creativity, to relax the child in a time and age when everybody is so hyperactive. It is a way to build trust between 
the child and the educator. Now sometimes we wonder what really is the role of such a traditional tool like storytelling when we have interactive CD-ROMs where you insert and the CD asks you questions, you click a button, you hear a clap when your answer is correct or you hear mm -mm, try again a digital voice which answers back to you. Sometimes we wonder what is the role of a tool like storytelling? Well it is this first and foremost in CDs it is somebody else's creativity that the child receives but when they hear stories it is the child's imagination and creativity which comes out. Secondly CD does not offer any human interaction. Well, even if 10 CDs give the child 1000 scores, yet what will really bring joy to a child's heart is when the teacher looks into his or her eyes and gives a smile and says, very nice, isn't it? Storytelling brings that human interaction in the transaction. Not only that, the storyteller acknowledges the child and allows for the child to participate in the storytelling. That is why there is a beautiful saying in Africa which goes, the television knows many stories but the storyteller knows us. Well, now that we find storytelling to be such a powerful and engaging tool in the classroom, let us look at some of the integral elements of storytelling. Let us look at how specifically storytelling plays an essential role in language development. When it comes to language development, we shall look at listening skill, speaking skill, reading skill, writing skill, vocabulary and grammar. Does the listening skill of the child improve when they listen to stories? Of course, the answer is in the question itself. Children learn to focus, concentrate and listen with all their attention without focusing on distractions. They get to see a sample of what good speech is like. So definitely it helps the listening skill of the child. And what about speaking skill? Well, in the course of listening to stories and answering questions in between, like we saw in the session, where children guess answers, children participate in the storytelling, they get an opportunity to speak up. Also, after the storytelling, we could always invite children to share. They could share the story they heard, they could share new stories. All of these motivate the child to speak up more. They build the confidence of the child in speaking skill. They are also able to work on their pronunciation, on the intonation of the words, all of which are related to speaking skill. Now coming to reading skill. Some of us might think that if children are listening to a story, they may not want to read the same story. But it would surprise you that when children hear a story and you ask them after that, would you like to read the book which has the story? All hands will go up. Even the children who you think are not interested in reading. This is primarily because children don't have any hatred for reading. But children are scared of reading. They are scared of the content. They are scared of the new words. So when the story is familiar to them, they are less fearful. Also, because they have heard the story, they want to know what the book looks like. So they are more curious. For these two reasons, we can use 
storytelling as a fantastic tool to motivate children to read. Consequently, we can also work on their reading skills. Now, what about writing? Hmm, that is a big task and we might think mm, it's okay to make them listen and speak and read but no, no, making them write is going to be very difficult which is true. However, one good way is to allow children to draw the story that they heard. When they get a chance to draw the story, they find it very interesting much more interesting than copying notes from the board. Once they draw the story, we can encourage them to add small dialogues. Now, dialogue writing is also a writing task. So, in this small way, children voluntarily, willingly and joyfully get interested in the act of writing. Often I'm surprised by children who come forward and write the entire story because you're so excited, even if we give them a very small writing task. So these are ways in which the listening, speaking, reading and writing skills of the children can develop. Again, what about vocabulary of the child? Is the child able to learn new words when they listen to stories? Think about it. Let us say I have a word in my story, for example, terrified. And the child has never heard that word before. And in the story, I say, the little girl was terrified. So through the drama, through the context of the sentence, I am able to support the child in giving meaning to that word the child begins to sense that the word terrified may be related to fear. So in this ways, storytelling can be a very beautiful and powerful tool for introducing new words to the child. Lastly, grammar. Grammar is a nightmare for a lot of us and trying to teach the rules of grammar is a bigger nightmare. Yes, children may not remember rules, but they eventually pick up sentence constructions, sentence patterns. For example, a very popular mistake with a lot of students is using the past tense of the verb when it is not required. For example, did you took my pencil is what they would say instead of saying did you take my pencil? And suppose we have a story in which a rabbit is asking the kangaroo, did you take my biscuit? The children learn the phrase. After a few days, they will substitute, did you take my biscuit with, did you take my pencil? So even without their knowledge, they pick up correct grammar and correct sentence construction in very many ways. So in these ways, storytelling can be employed in a semi-structured and systematic manner for language development of the child in the language classroom. Well, to begin with, the voice. The voice is a tool which we can play around with and have lots of fun in storytelling performance. For example, if you're saying, and the demon said, who is there? And the little girl answered, this is me, Mohini. Well, doesn't that make it much more exciting for the child? Speech, the words we use, the way we use them, can again make a big difference in the story telling. I could say, and they ran up the mountain quickly, 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 quickly. They went up, 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 up and reached there really fast because they were being chased by the tiger. And when the tiger saw them. So this way we can play with speed of speech. We can 
change the volume? Who's there? It's me. Softness, loudness, fast, slow, all of these can make storytelling much more interesting and engaging for the child. Another interesting element, very interesting for the child is sound effects. They love it. If you said, and the king laughed, they like it. But if you say, the king laughed, ha, 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 they really like it. So we could say, and the door opened instead. And the door opened. It is much more interesting for the child. The shepherd took his sheep. All of these are interesting sound effects that can make the storytelling come alive for the child. You will be surprised to find them imitating you and making all those sounds. Another rule of drama is expressions. Just with our face, we can say so much. And the lady became very... The child knows you mean sad. And the father was very angry. A lot can be said even without saying. Gestures, again, a simple interesting tool. Come here, said the mama. Go away, said the rabbit sternly. These are ways in which we can play around with the storytelling. Of course, body language is another very important tool of storytelling. King or a beggar can transform in just a few seconds for the listener in your story. All these tools of dramatization are very helpful for us when we tell stories. Now, if you think these tools of dramatization, I don't have the talent, I don't have the skill, well, that is really not true. Think about it. If on a really stressful day, the children in the classroom are terribly noisy and are not listening to you at all, at some point, you're going to be saying, Keep quiet! Did I not tell you to keep quiet? Imagine at that very moment, the principal walks into the classroom. You're going to turn around and say, Good afternoon, ma'am. Now, isn't that your own voice modulation skill? All of us have dramatization skills naturally in us. It is just that we do not explore it. So now is the chance to start exploring all your dramatic skills in the classroom with the children through storytelling. Some more very simple ways to make storytelling a highly interactive experience for the child. One primary tool, just like in poetry, we have a chorus or a refrain, something which repeats itself in a story, makes it very enjoyable and easy for the child. For example, in the story in which we heard, find, find, my fortune I will find, that line comes again and again and again in the story. This makes it very interesting for the child. Repetition. Repetition is a good tool to bring into stories. Another tool is other languages. We live in a country full of beautiful cultures and cuisines and languages. So, it is a good idea to bring in other languages into the storytelling like I did. I brought in two lines of Bengali. Whatever language we know, we could just build in two lines from it. Jodito dakshu neko nashe 
tobe hakle cholore or we could have someone else turning around and saying enna kavi paadinalum mundan ullam irungavillai it doesn't matter what language it doesn't matter in what way we bring it in but it makes it very interesting for the child what one can also do is bring in music in simple small ways we don't have to be singers so if i said and they went walking they were quite tired so they went ding lam 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 ding lam lam ti ding ti ding ding lam 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 ding lam lam ti ding ti ding this is a very small simple movement a very easy song to sing and it makes everyone so happy just moving their body is a little dance movement this way we can bring in music and dance into the storytelling making it so interactive for the child and talking of interaction bringing in participation of the child is up to us to entertain them in the story so when we say how do you think they went walking or how do you think they went did they go by we can take suggestions from the children so children might say oh they went by aircraft is it did they go like that oh you think they went by train we can allow children to answer we can build their answers into our storytelling and in this way also make storytelling a highly interactive experience for the child let us talk a little bit about the kind of stories that one can look at when we tell children if you look back at the story that we just heard it helps to choose simple stories with an interesting plot with simple language with few characters not very complex and which has a lot of feeling in it such stories are much loved by children because it is easy to understand it is enjoyable and children can join in the story so do make sure that when you choose stories you choose simple stories with an interesting plot with simple language with few characters and most importantly with a lot of dialogues dialogues bring a live storytelling so in a story when we have dialogues it also gives us scope for voice modulation so if i say the father told his son to go and bring some money because the son was so lazy instead if we add dialogues in it we can say the father said to the son lazy son go and make some money and the son said hey father i don't know what is money so adding dialogues gives a lot of scope to really make the storytelling a powerful and super fun experience for the child